You've seen the amazing Death Racer action at various Rep Rap festivals, but everything seems a bit intimidating or complex, and you don't know where or how to get started. I was the same, so I've partnered with Bamboo Labs who sponsored this video, and I've worked through all of the sourcing, building and configuration challenges to bring you a complete bill of materials, a detailed build guide and wiring diagram to get you through your building experience from beginning to end. There's an extra bonus for my UK friends too, as you'll be able to get full kits to help you with sourcing, which you can pre-order on my website now. As I mentioned, this build is sponsored by Bamboo Labs, who've kindly provided an X1 Carbon, AMS and materials for me to be able to do this build. The X1 Carbon has absolutely breezed through the whole printing process without a single print failure, so if you're after a ready to run machine with configurations and multicolor printing options, check out the link below. First things first, death racers are not my idea or my design. The design belongs to the partnership of Michael Badley and Sam Prentiss, aka Prentiss Badley Designs. They've come together to bring you the Death Racers project. They're both talented robotics and droid designers with a passion for 3D printing. You can find Michael's Patreon page and Sam's YouTube channel linked down below. The Patreon page is where you can find the design files and STLs for this project. However, in my opinion, what isn't included is a really detailed guide for noobs or fully complete parts list. Since my fully detailed guide will be too much for this video, you can find my complete documentation and extended video via the link below for everything from buying the parts, assembling the kit, programming the controls, charging the batteries and setting up to race. So without further ado, let's get started. Of course, the first step is printing. I chose to go with black and yellow colors partly because it matches my V3D logo. Most of the body is made up from bamboo ABS with the black accents made from carbon fiber nylon, although I chose not to make any of the critical parts from this material as I didn't want any unfair advantage when it comes to battling. I also used a black ABS for some other areas where I took advantage of the AMS to make some multicolored prints. The tracks need to be made from TPU, which is that flexible material. It doesn't have to be very flexible, like 95A is fine, but it doesn't work in the bamboo AMS. So I used just a standard food dehydrator to continually like feed and dry that material at the same time, and that gave me the best results. I printed the modified two part chassis and made a couple of custom modifications myself to some of the smaller parts, just to make the process a little bit easier. In terms of part selection and sourcing, I'm building the pro drive version, which is what I'd recommend and was recommended to me by Sam Prentice. This exchanges the Pololu motors and PCB for some high performance motors with a gearbox and ESCs or electronic speed controllers. Alongside this change, I've also opted for a different battery, which you need for the correct configuration, namely a 6000 milliamp hour 2S LiPo, which should work well for this setup. The bomb I've worked off of was quite limited, especially when it comes to electronics, wiring and screws. So I had to buy a bunch of different lengths and sizes, but this shouldn't be an issue for you if you use my bomb, as I recorded all the lengths and sizes that I used as I progressed through the build, and I've created a complete bomb with all those details in it. The next step is to do some pre-build checks and preparation. Pairing the receiver is definitely something worth doing straight away. If you start turning things on without a working transmitter or receiver, this can be problematic. While you've got the transmitter turned on, you can also set up mixing, which will make driving it quite a bit easier, I think, for most people. If you're doing it without the kit, you can also make the battery splitter harness at this point. This is pretty simple to do as long as you have a soldering iron with a large tip. The wires and connectors are large and take quite a lot of heat, so some helping hands can help this process too to prevent you burning yourself. Now is also a good time to build the kill switch wiring. This is just a couple of cables and a connector. I used Molex SL as it has a locking connector and I had these laying around, but JSTSM or DuPont connectors would also work well. At the same time, you can check which orientation the switch needs to be using a multimeter or by setting up a simple circuit to know when it's on or off. The last thing to prepare is one of the ESCs. This will be connected to the kill switch, so you'll need to cut off the existing switch and wire in the connector instead, obviously one that matches the one that you put on the kill switch. With all this stuff prepared, we should now have a fairly smooth build process, so let's get into it. I started with the tracks. Cutting all the pins took a little while, but was simple enough to do really, and the final result looks really good. And it has pretty good flexibility as tracks go, and there doesn't seem to be any risk of the pins falling out, so that's good. 
After attaching the gearbox to the motor with a user modified spacer, it took me a couple of attempts to find a suitable configuration for the motor wires where they would secure to the motor, have enough length to reach the chassis and not collide with the track wheels. It's a bit of a tight fit, but it does work if you do it just right. Next, I assembled the rider. The most important part here is the kill switch. It needs to be at the right height to trigger with the head movement and the right orientation to be on or off at the right time. The body pieces can be a bit confusing to see how they fit together initially, but referencing the part names helps a little bit with that. Moving on to the rear post and bludger arm, I found that the default design for the arm required holes drilled through the steel shaft. This wouldn't be really very easy for me, or I guess most people, so I modified the design to use screws that grip into the arm, like just pressing into it instead. It's easier to assemble and also to remove the arm later if needed. The front control panel is a really cool idea where the levers end up moving to correspond with the motor power. Assembly of this part didn't provide any major issues, just make sure to get the servo arms orientated correctly as you assemble them because they're not very easy to adjust afterwards. For the chassis there were a couple of options. I originally went with the standard design but organising the wires proved quite difficult so I opted to change this and go for the modified two part design. This incorporates two steel bars for stiffening and uses some heat set inserts in the base to allow easy removal of the bottom giving really good access for managing wires. Getting all the different assemblies connected together is a fairly simple process once you know the order in which to do it but I did find that organising the electronics and wiring is basically just kind of push it in and put the lid on. I tried doing this in a couple of different ways to see which way was easiest and eventually came up with a method that makes it fairly simple, but it's still a little bit messy. The removable base definitely really helps with this quite a lot. Once it was assembled, I turned it on at the workbench just to make sure it, you know, turns on without going up in smoke and that the controls just generally respond as I expect and then I took it out for a quick spin to make sure everything was fully functioning as expected. I've had a couple of little things to troubleshoot, but it's now working really well and I'm glad I put in the effort to build one. My current plan is to join in a Death Racer event in December at the Sanjay Mortimer Rap Rap Festival here in Oxford in the UK. So hopefully I'll see you there with your Death Racer 2. Remember, links down in the description for all the information you need about Bamboo Labs as well as kits and guides and information on building your own Death Racer.